You know that voice in your head that starts to get really loud when a painting just isn't going the way you hoped? The one that sounds discouraged and is like, ugh, I just don't like this, or this isn't up to muster, or I definitely need to keep working on this, or I have overworked this painting, or I'm gonna have to start over. If you have ever felt this way at the easel, you're not alone. But if you don't dig deeper into why your painting is disappointing you, you're probably missing a lot of opportunities to save your paintings and improve your skills. So today I want to talk you through the approach that I use to critique my own paintings when I get stuck, and the method that I teach to my students so that they can stop getting stuck on their paintings. If you're really interested in taking your painting to the next level and going even more in depth with this process, I'm hosting a free webinar on Monday, April 15th at 3 p.m. Eastern to walk through step by step what my process looks like to go from a goal of creating beautiful paintings all the way to having a professional level body of work that you're proud of. There's a link down in the description to save your spot, and even if you can't attend live, there will be a replay link for anyone who registers, and I would love to see you there. So diving right in to this conundrum, when I sat down on my easel today, I felt this sense of dread with this painting. The painting just wasn't going how I had hoped, and I honestly wasn't sure why. So let's talk through exactly what I need to do to fix it. So I need to start by taking my emotions out of this equation. So instead of, ugh, this painting is a mess, I need to figure out exactly what it is on the painting that's making me feel this way. And I find that there's actually a pretty standard order of operations that I like to go through to determine this. Starting with the question, did my reference set me up to make a painting I would like in the first place? If I look at the reference for a particular painting, and it just evokes a vague notion of what the final painting would look like, but I would need to make a bunch of changes, like I need to change the lighting, or the pose, or the angle, or the props, or the costuming, or the background, or I would need to put better color into it, There were probably a bunch of opportunities to solve those problems before I started painting. But if I'm at the point where I'm stuck, I need to take this chance to pause and work out these problems or these questions before I go any further. So first things first, am I satisfied with my reference for this painting? Or does it need to be mocked up further? And the way that I know the answer to this, because being satisfied sounds like an emotional question, and I guess the way I worded it, it kind of is. But to make this more objective and more straightforward, I would say, when I look at my reference photo, can I fully visualize what the final painting is going to look like? Is it basically just going to look like this reference photo plus brushstrokes? If not, I probably need to take some steps to actually get the reference photo to that stage. So with the reference for this painting, I would say the reference is is great. Uh, my friend Jared, who is a painter, put this together and very graciously let me use it for, for my own work here. That being said, I could definitely do some extra work to visualize a background that I would want to have him as the subject uh, sitting on top of. Um, so with that in mind, here's the mock-up that I then created based on this reference. So yes, with this mock-up, I am satisfied and no there are not changes that I would want to make. I feel like I can look at this mock-up and have a really solid sense of what the final painting really needs to look like. If my final painting looked like this with just brushstrokes added, I would be thrilled. This is where you want to be too. Whenever possible, go through the steps to develop a mock-up that will honestly just look like the final painting. This helps you to avoid a number of problems that occur because you're trying to just make up your goal as you go along. So once the game plan is locked in, the next question I'm going to ask myself is, is my drawing accurate? Are any of the features or major proportions just out of place and need to be corrected in order to get a likeness? No? Proceed. All right, so in this case, I don't see any significant drawing problems that I need to address, so I would go ahead and proceed to the next question. That being said, If your reference is in good shape and you got to the point where you were looking at the drawing and you realize there are drawing errors, fix those before you proceed. I have a number of videos on my channel walking through how to fix drawing problems when you do identify them, so don't hesitate to put this video on pause and then dig through some other resources that I've put together to help you to get that drawing in good shape. Okay, the third question I'm going to ask is, Is my value structure working as intended? 
are there any major differences between my big shapes of values or the values that I've painted when comparing the painting to the reference? Once again, if no, proceed on to the next question. If yes, go ahead and pause and work out those value issues before you go further. Fourth, do I see major differences in color? Specifically, since I have value sorted out already from the previous question, are there differences in my hue choices or levels of saturation or chroma in this painting? Or are there places where I was intending to exaggerate the color from my reference for an impressionistic effect that maybe I've neglected? If I do want to do this, if I do want to exaggerate the color that's in my reference, can I actually mock this up first to give myself a little bit of a guide so I'm not experimenting on the painting itself? Or do I actually have to just try this on the canvas and see if it will work? One thing I want to note here is as I show you the example of my painting in progress next to my reference, um, it is incredibly difficult to photograph the color of a painting. This is true for the camera I film on, it's true for the camera I take progress pictures on. So this isn't perfect. Um, it is really helpful to be able to just use your eye in the moment, um, but this gives you kind of an idea of where the color is at and what some of those color concerns might look like. So once I'm actually comparing my painting to the reference, Yes, I see that my overall rendering is much too saturated in the flesh tones, and this needs to be dialed down. And to the other question, I'm not particularly looking to exaggerate the color anywhere beyond what my reference shows me. So I would say no extra mock-up is needed there. And then the final question, does my brushwork match the sort of paintings I'm drawn to or inspired by? In my case, I wanted to have more Sargent-esque brushwork with decisive, bold brush strokes, especially in areas like the hair. And I just don't have those yet. This also gives me an opportunity to further break down some of the subtleties in the features and get more details in areas like the eyes or the hair. So already I have some action items that I can take back to the easel. That being said, before I go any further, one thing I want to go ahead and note when suggesting that as painters, we get better about stepping back and figuring out the objective qualities of the painting that are giving us a subjective emotional experience of ugh, is that even professionals can fall victim to this. It is not a black and white issue where the masters are just above having emotions about their paintings. So if you're kicking yourself about not asking yourself these kinds of questions sooner or not being more objective already in your art practice, or you're thinking of a fantastic artist that you look up to who can be very temperamental about assessing their own paintings, don't worry. It is normal to have emotional reactions when your work isn't living up to your expectations or when it exceeds those expectations. You know, it's totally normal to look at a painting and go, I killed this. This was incredible. I love it. I am amazing. And just to leave it at that. But I hope that these steps give you an insight into the sometimes invisible steps that the pros take to get a painting back on track. Because if the issue isn't the composition, the drawing, the value, the color, or the edges or impasto and brushwork, what could possibly be missing? As far as I know, this genuinely does cover all of your bases. You may have even seen me go through these steps or ask these questions in my video where I critique my student John's master copy of a John Singer Sargent self-portrait. John was really generous in letting me share his painting on YouTube and critique it for all of you. So if you haven't given that video a watch, check it out to see one more example of this process in action. But John is also a fantastic student and a dedicated painter. He's one of the first people in my artist student community to remind his fellow painters to deconstruct their frustrations with a painting into things like composition, drawing, value, color, or brushwork. And John's commitment to his craft really shows. He recently had his work juried into a group exhibition. And upon arriving to the opening of that exhibition, he saw that his painting was front and center. The painting that you first saw when you walked into the gallery. And the painting had been awarded third prize, putting him up there with full-time professional artists that he has idolized for a long time. 
John explained that his experience at the reception was nothing short of overwhelming. He found himself amidst judges and fellow artists and important figures in the art community, all of whom were just really excited to talk to him about his work and what they love about it. His story is a vivid reminder of what's possible when you dedicate yourself to your art and you continuously seek to improve and embrace the journey with an open heart and mind. John's experience at the opening, from the initial feeling of being a rank amateur in his words, to the acknowledgement of his talent and the connections that he made, really encapsulates the essence of what it means to truly live as an artist. If you'd like to have a journey like John's, check out the link in the description to join me on Monday's webinar about what exact steps you need to take to go from oil painting amateur to the master of your own style. Again, the webinar is free. It'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern for those who can attend live, and the recording will be sent out to everyone who registers as well in case you can't make it. So there we have it. I went from feeling meh and stuck on this painting and frankly dreading having to figure out what needed to happen next to take it to a finish to having a clear idea of what needs to happen next and how to go ahead and achieve it. To get from meh to heck yeah. I need to go ahead and lower the chroma of the skin to take out some of the warmth and focus on reworking areas that have fussy or overworked brushwork, going over it with more decisive marks. Now, all I need to do is, well, do it. So until next time, I'll be at the easel bringing this painting to a finish. And for you and your studio, I'm going to borrow my student John's sign off. Push paint. Have fun. <laughs>